the Mac Studio might just be the perfect computer for podcasting. And I'm going to try to explain why. All right, let's get to it. Yo, what up, YouTube? Crash Wilcox. And today, yeah, I'm going to be trying to explain to you why I think the Mac Studio is the perfect computer if you have a podcast. Um, so we'll just get the sort of elephant in the room out of the way. You might be saying, why are you recording this show on a MacBook Pro then? Um, and that's a good question. <laughs> the reason for that is I had to disconnect my Mac Studio in order to make this video. Um, and if you're familiar with the channel, I recently bought this Mac Studio or this MacBook Pro. Um, none of this is sponsored. Obviously, if you look at my subscriber count, you know that it's not sponsored. So I purchased this as sort of a downgrade, if you will, um, but a more practical solution for my podcasting because I did have a i7 12700K with a 3060 Ti and it was, you know, big, bulky. I wanted to downgrade a little bit. So I had something that was more portable. So I wasn't locked in this studio for hours and hours recording, editing, and doing all that sort of stuff. Um, and it's fine. It does what it, I need it to do, and it doesn't really have any issues, but it's not the perfect solution. And um, that sort of led me down the road to getting the Mac Studio and giving this a try. And I have been supremely impressed with the Mac Studio, where I've been a little bit wanting with the MacBook Pro. So this is a 14-inch uh M1 Pro base model. This is a M1 Max Max Studio base model. They're both $2,000 computers. Um, so before we dive into the studio, I will just say this: they're both great. If you get either one of them, you can't go wrong. I'm sure you'll be happy. This MacBook Pro makes sense if you want to start a podcast. Um, and this is your setup, what I'm doing right here. You got a microphone, you got a computer, right? Because this is an all-in-one, obviously. It's got a screen, it's got a keyboard, it's got a trackpad, it's got a webcam. It even has decent built-in microphones if you don't have your own microphone. Um, but this is a cheap, I mean, this is a $100 USB microphone that you can just plug right in, you're podcasting. Um, but where this kind of falls short and what I didn't like about it is when you're running what I'm going to show you later in the show, how me and my wife do our podcast. It's a little more elaborate. And when it comes to, you know, hooking up 15 different, you know, cables and dongles and mics and screens, and um, you got to find somewhere to mount this thing. And it just becomes a little unwieldy. Uh, I found and I just was not overall pleased with using it. Um, and that's, again, what led me to this. So, again, there are reasons to go with the Mac Pro. You'll have to make that judgment call on your own. They're both more than capable. I just feel that this makes more sense for my podcast. And I think if yours is like mine, it'll make more sense for you as well. So, um with our podcast, you know, it's a, um, we video record our podcast and put it on YouTube as well as the podcast. So we do video editing and our podcast can tend to run anywhere between 45 minutes to we've had some episodes up two hours long. So we do two hour potential video edits, um, and nothing elaborate, but I will throw it up on the screen right now. And you can see the, one of the shows that we just recently did and the render times between both of these computers. So if you're paying attention to the screen, that's basically an hour and 20 minute long episode. All we really did there was a couple of color corrections, uh, a few audio effects, you know, EQ, um, you know, compressor, maybe a de-esser, um, some transitions, a couple of uh, text titles, a couple of, images popping in nothing elaborate um, as you can see and i'm using final cut pro which is the most optimized um video editing software for a mac and you can see 
the Mac Studio is quite literally twice as fast at rendering than the MacBook Pro. Um, in addition to that, the MacBook Pro, just when editing on it, it, I won't say it stutters, but it's not quite as, I still get the, the little rainbow circle more often than I would expect to. Um, didn't get that once on the studio. And I think really the only big difference um, that you can glean from any of that recording and rendering and editing is the MacBook Pro has 16 gigs of RAM. The Mac Studio has 32. And when I was rendering, the MacBook Pro would only utilize about nine gigs of RAM. Whereas on the studio, it would sort of stretch its legs and utilize up to 14 to 15 gigs of RAM. So that might be really the only difference. I forgot to mention, I did have noise reduction on there. I don't know if that's ultimately what slowed down both of these renders a lot, but um, yeah, twice as fast on the Mac Studio. So, I mean, that simply alone, it makes this more valuable to me um, because that is my show, right? There's no real like, oh, well, you know, I did a 4K 10 minute render and this was seven seconds faster, but what's seven seconds? No, I mean, that's my show and that's a real render and that's really 14 to 15 minutes faster render time on the studio. Um, so, I mean, and again, if you're unfamiliar with the specs, eight core, 14 or eight core CPU, 14 core GPU, 16 gigs of RAM on the MacBook Pro 14, 10 core CPU, 24 core GPU, 32 gigs of RAM on the Mac Studio. So, a lot more to offer. Um, in addition to that, oh, and also if you're interested in sticking around here, I'm going to be doing some comparisons coming up with the MacBook Pro against um, some comparably priced Windows laptops. Uh, because like you, I've watched a lot of the Mac videos on YouTube and for all the fanfare and all of the ad, you know, adulation that they've received, I'm just a little, a little underwhelmed. It's fine. I have no big, big complaints against it, but for $2,000, and what I was expecting, it left a little bit to be desired. Um, whereas the Mac Studio, I have nothing but praise for this. Um, so if you're interested in sticking around for those, um, please do. I think I'll have a unique option to consider, one that you never really hear much about, but I think it'll be a nice comparison. But then moving away from that onto the Mac Studio, why does this make such a good podcasting computer? Well, I think we talked about the power, obviously, which is great, but also the port selection is fantastic. So on the Max version, the base model here, you get two USB-C ports in the front, plus an SD card reader. If this was the M1 Ultra, you would be getting two Thunderbolt 4 ports in the front. Um, moving around to the back, you get four Thunderbolt 4 ports, 10 gigabit ethernet, your power cord, two USB-A, HDMI, and your headphone jack. And, you know, it'd be nice to get some Thunderbolt 4 up in the front. It's unnecessary for what I do, as you'll see here in just a few minutes as we, as we dive into uh, my setup here. It's unnecessary for what I need. And having four Thunderbolt 4 ports, I mean, for God's sakes, you could have one on the back and do everything you need, uh, basically. So it's excessive. It'd be nice, sure, but you, you know, you gotta make some trade-offs. So port selection's fantastic here. Um, we talked about the power in the RAM, which makes this a wonderful option. And the last point that I wanna get to before we kind of dive into um, how I run the podcast and um, why this really makes, you know, is so great, but that last point is silence. It is incredible <laughs> how much power you can get in this little computer and it doesn't make a sound. You know, it's unplugged right now and this is about how much sound it makes when it's under a full load. 
it's incredible. And, you know, you can put together a Windows PC that's more powerful. Um, you can put together a Windows PC that has a better port selection. But you can't put together something that's comparable in power and port selection that's this quiet. Um, I don't know that you can make a Windows computer this quiet. It is, you know, and when you're talking about podcasting, silence is everything, right? I mean, you need it to be quiet and you can't hear this thing, you know, no matter what you're running, what you're doing, it doesn't make a sound. Um, now to be fair, the MacBook pro, I've never heard the fans kick on on this thing. And I mean that quite literally, I've never heard the fans kick on. I mean, I'm sitting right here, the microphone's right here. I'll be quiet for a second so you can hear it. It doesn't make a sound. So kudos on that, but neither does this and it's stronger. It's more powerful. So with that said, we're going to dive into taking a look at, you know, how we run our podcast, be uh, considerate for the little studio that we're in. It's, it's a work in progress. I get it. Things are just kind of like tacked to the wall right now as we're making do. Um, but I'll show you guys that and then we'll jump back here to kind of close this video out. All right, so we just moved over here at the little podcasting desk that we got set up over here. And we got everything hooked up, everything running, just like we would with a normal podcast. So let's jump into these screens and see what we got working. Oh, also I'll mention, got two USB LED lights setting up here. They're both going full bore. Um, obviously got the camera being recorded and then jumping in here to the screens. Yep, right here we got, you know, normal notes like we would have pulled up for any episode. I also have Pluto right here, um, which is just kind of a hardware utilization. And you can see right now we're sitting at about 25, 23, 25% CPU utilization, about nine and a half gigs of RAM being utilized right now. Um, down here, we got OBS going, recording here on OBS. And we've got Reaper running up here. That's recording and then jumping over to the next screen. Um, we've got win or Safari tabs open. We got our main man Linus right here. Everyone's favorite tech YouTuber. And you know, we got 10 different tabs opened up here. And this is not uncommon for what we would normally do on a podcast. Just random tabs, you know, different things opened up. Um, so that's kind of how we would normally you know, do a podcast, right? So a um, bunch of stuff open, a bunch of stuff going. Can't hear the Mac studio at all. Whisper quiet, not a drop frame, not a stutter, not a slowdown, not a rainbow wheel, none of it. It runs perfectly. All right, so that's how we run our podcast. And when you're looking at that, I mean, it's incredible, right? You, get, I mean, I literally at that point when you're looking at that, I have what 16 and a half gigabytes or 16 and a half terabytes of hard drive space hooked up to the computer uh not that it's running at all but it can um oh, i'm sorry no it's actually 17 terabytes with the sd card plugged in there um so you're running two external hard drives and that's because i run reaper off of this um, external this samsung t7 hard drive that's where i keep my digital audio workstation reaper is on there so i can switch it between my computers um, but you're running two external hard drives an sd card two um, very large just external hard drives not even ssds you've got audio interfaces microphones two screens led lights that are being you know usb led lights a camera that's recording um, all of that going on and it doesn't make a sound. And not to mention, I still have a free Thunderbolt 4 port 
and a free HDMI input plus a free headphone jack if I want to use it. So it just makes sense. It's a lot of money, sure. But, you know, I think for the longevity, I mean, there's no reason why this would not be be able to last me five years as a podcasting computer. I mean, rendering out a podcast, you know, the way that we do our show. And yeah, I mean, there's no reason why this can't last. Because again, this is the base model. It's a 500 gigabyte hard drive in here. But with the addition of the external hard drives and all of that, you know, when it's up and running, I've got three terabytes of hard drive space going. Um, and I mean, it'll last for five, six years, you know, perfectly fine because it doesn't take very much computing power to, um, run a Reaper DAW. I mean, my phone can probably render out in no time on Reaper. Um, and then, you know, video editing, sure. It might get a little bit sluggish down the road, but I mean, it's it's not going to get that sluggish, right? I mean, Things may improve and get better from here, but it doesn't mean this is going to be worse. It just means, hey, there's better options out there, but this is still going to be awesome. So it's a worthwhile investment, in my opinion, um, for the longevity, the power, the port selection, but more importantly, the whisper quiet operation of this thing is amazing. So I hope you guys found this useful. If you have questions, comments, concerns about any of this stuff, if you'd like to see maybe some more benchmarks, I know this wasn't very benchmark heavy, but you've seen all the benchmarks, right? Um, I just wanted to kind of give you my thoughts on why this makes more sense than this. Um, So I hope you found it useful. If you did, consider dropping a like, maybe subscribe if you're feeling a, a bit frisky, I'd appreciate it. But otherwise, stick around, hit that notification bell so you don't miss when I drop the comparison videos for this MacBook Pro. All right, guys, God bless.